21st Precinct, Sergeant Lyons. You caught a what? A burglar lady? With a butcher knife? Well, where is this? Where? What you are by transcription in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right, lady, I'll send the officers right over there. Yes, ma'am, right away. Just be careful till they get there. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st. 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants, of whom I'm the boss. My name is Cronin, Vincent P. Cronin. I'm captain in command of the 21st Precinct. I was doing night duty, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. After I turned out the platoon for the night tour and cleaned up the paperwork that had accumulated since I was last on duty 22 hours earlier, sector car number two came by the house for me, and I went on patrol of the precinct with patrolman David Meister as operator. When the commanding officer is on patrol in an RMP car, he assumes all the duties of the car's recorder, which includes signaling on the two-way radio, and keeping the desk officer informed by telephone of all police action taken by the crew of the car. Uh, pull over the next call box, Meister. I want to ring in. Yes, sir. I'll just be a second. Yes, sir. Captain Cronin, box 14. Uh, yes, sir. I'll be in in a little while, Sergeant. The man named Doyle coming by to see me. Now, you tell him yes, that he can wait to... Uh, we just had a call. A woman's holding a burglar at the point of a butcher knife. 613 East 92nd Street, apartment 2B. 2B? Yes, sir, that's right. We're right near there. We'll roll on it. Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me, would you, officer? Yeah, what is it, Sergeant? Oh, where's the subway? Well, please? you walk two blocks over here to Lexington, one block down to 86. Would that take me to the Brooklyn Navy Yard? Well, you ask the station agent there. We've got an emergency call. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. What might much apply? 613 East 92nd, my son. Yes, sir. The call just came over the air. Let's go. The crime of house burglary is often the specialty of narcotic addicts, many of whom are dangerous when cornered. A citizen who attempts to detain a felony suspect is in grave danger. The fact that this citizen was reported to be a woman and was also reported to be holding a burglary suspect at the point of a butcher knife, made the call all the more urgent. All emergency radio calls are directed at a particular sector car. In addition, the sergeant's car must respond to every call, and, according to the manual of procedure, all department vehicles within a radius of five blocks from the scene of the crime must make the run, irrespective of sector, precinct, or division boundary line. In this instance, it happened that we were closest to the scene. The run was a short one. We were the first car to arrive. That's it, Captain. Pull in. Now, let's go. Yes, sir. Apartment 2D, wasn't it? Well, they said 2B at the house. Lock, Captain. Hit the bells, all of them. Somebody will push the button. I can see to the top of the stairs. You hit them all? Yes, sir. There it goes. Put the door in the lock. Yes, sir, I did. All right. There's an apartment door open up there. That could be it. Yeah. It is it. Inside. Well, you got here fast enough. Is uh, that the burglar? I'm not a burglar. Oh, yes, you oh, are. Ridiculous. All right, now, Ridiculous. I said all right, so. lady. Give me that knife, lady. You won't let her get away. Give me the knife. All right. All right. Now. What's this all about? I'll tell you what it's all about. She's not over my place, and I right. think she well, has to say Both it. of you take it easy, huh? Okay, just answer my question. Sergeant Lyons, Captain. Is everything okay, Captain? Yep, yeah, that's all right. I'll get the others back on patrol. Okay. Okay, everything's under control. Secretary Is this please. your apartment? Yes, that's right. Well, what's your name, please? This is Equity. This is Catherine Equity. Do you know what she did? All right, she was... all right, hold it. What's your name? 
Mrs. Eckerty. Mrs. Marie Eckerty. You live here? She does not. Let her answer, please. Do you? No. You two related? In a way, sort of. Not by blood, we're not, not by I'm blood. Not one her. Her. Ladies, ladies, please, now blood. just a second, huh? One at a time. Now, you, how are you related? I'm married to Joe, and she's married to Eddie, and Joe and Eddie are brothers. Is that right? Yes, she's Joe's wife. At least they're married. Now, what kind of a crack you is that? You know what I'm talking about. I don't about. know what you're right, talking now, about. Please, well, ladies. Ladies. Okay, now hold it. What's this all about? Why did you call the police? And why the knife? I caught her stealing. I was not apostles. stealing. You were. I caught Ladies, her. just a second. What do you mean you caught her stealing? I came home and found her taking some of my things. They're not your things. They're dad's. They're things. mine. You know they're, they're not. mine. You know they are oh, not hold yours. Hold it just a minute, please. All right. My sir. Yeah, Captain. A fine thing. That's all I've got to say. Everybody's back on the job, Captain. Oh, good, Sergeant. Uh, Mrs. Eckerty. Yes. Yes, what is it? Uh, this, Mrs. Eckerty. Marie. Mm -hmm. You wait in the kitchen with a sergeant, please. I want to talk to your sister. I don't know why I should. There. There, you see, she's just plainly stubborn. Don't you call me uh, stubborn. You please, just a minute. Sergeant, this is Mrs. Marie Eckerty. Would you go into the kitchen with her? Yes, sir. Miss? All right. Don't let her get away now. Don't worry about that. I'm not going to get away. What do I want to get away for? Shut the door, sergeant. Okay, Captain. All right, now, Mrs. Eckerty. What do you say happened? She was trying to rob my apartment. I caught her. Well, look, let's, uh, let's start a little further back than that. Hmm? I'll start any place you want. Nice. Sir. Yes, sir. Pay attention to this conversation. You may need it in court. Sure, Captain. Hello, Captain. What have we got? All right? Look on the key. Right there. Well, this is certainly getting involved, isn't you it? You called the police, Mrs. Eckerty. This is Lieutenant King. He's in charge of the 21st Squad Detective. How do you do? How are you? The call was a signal 30. A burglar was being held. In the kitchen. It's his sister-in-law, man. Oh? But she's a burglar. She was trying to rob me. I sent, him in with, I sent her in with Sergeant Collins, Matt. I couldn't get a straight story with both of them in here. I was willing to tell you a straight story. Well, what did happen, Mrs. Eckerty? Well, you see, I was out. Out to the movies. I go once a week, every Monday night when my husband's working. And she knows it. It's been a habit. Well, tonight I went and I didn't realize that I'd seen the picture. So I left after the cartoon. When I came home and opened the door, she was in the apartment. <laughs> How do you like that? Well, how did she get in? I don't know. I don't have any idea. Did you ask her? That didn't matter. All that mattered was that she was in. She was in here and she was going through the drawers of that chest there. That one right there. As a matter of fact, she broke the lock of the top drawer. She admitted it. That much she did. She admitted it. Well, what did she say she was after? Doesn't make any difference, does it? She broke into my apartment. That's a crime. She's your sister-in-law, Mrs. Eckerty. Why did you find it necessary to threaten her with a knife? Well, she was robbing the place. I came in and I said, what are you doing here? She started to go. I said, I'm going to call the police. She said, all right, call them. She sat right down in that chair there, just as bold as you please, and said, call them. So I did. And why did you need the knife? Well, who knows what she'd do? I thought she might leave or try to hit me, so I went in the kitchen and got the knife, and then I called on the telephone. Seems obvious that you and your sister-in-law don't get along very well. That's no fault of mine, I assure you. I've tried for years, for years I've tried. Anybody can tell you. And your husband's name is Eddie, has his show. Is that right? Yes. How do they get along, Zay? Well, all right, I suppose. After all, there's blood between them. They're brothers, and there's the business. They're partners in it. Oh? Well, what kind of business They is have it? trucks, and they have a contract for some of the newspapers to take the papers out to certain towns in the suburbs. You know, it's only a small business. They have four trucks, and they drive themselves and hire two other drivers for the others. That's where they are now, working. The morning newspapers come out at night, you know. Yeah, I know. Now, uh, Mrs. Eckerty, this trouble didn't start just because you came home and found your sister-in-law in your apartment. What's the real trouble, Mrs. Eckerty? Now, I'm glad you asked me that, Captain. There is a real trouble. She has alienated the affections of my father-in-law, my husband's father. That's what she did. She caused him to move right out of here and over to her house, right out of here after he'd been living with Joe and me for five years since my mother-in-law died. She poisoned that nice old man's mind against me and moved him right out of the house. Right out of the house. That's what she did. Oh, uh, oh, wait a minute. You mean there was an argument over who your husband's father should live with and you both wanted him? Well, I wanted him for himself. But she's after his money. She expects Dad to leave it all to her just because she has two bratty grandchildren. Oh, I see. Well, why do you think she broke in here? Oh, that's easy. My father-in-law left some war bonds in my safekeeping. He came here to get them, that's why. Not only war bonds, but my mother-in-law's jewelry. 
the diamond pin and the ring. Look, Mr. Deckity, this is just a family squabble. You're not interested in having her arrested. Who said I'm not? Why do you think I called the police? I want to get this settled once and for all. All right, we'll get it settled. You stay here. I'm not going any place. We'll talk to her. I might be coming along with us. Yes, sir. I'm just supposed to wait here. That's right. All right, if you say so. Okay, Sergeant. Yes, sir. You can get back on the job. Yes, sir. Hello, Lieutenant. Sergeant. Okay, I'll get rolling. Uh, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Vitaly was talking to one of the neighbors. Take a look for him in the hall. Tell him I want to see him. Sure, Lieutenant. You want this closed? Yes. Mrs. Eckerty, this is Lieutenant King. Oh. How do you do? I'm glad to meet you. How did you get in here, Mrs. Eckerty? With a key. Where'd you get the key? From Dad, uh, my father-in-law. Is it his? Well, he used to live here, you know, before he moved in with us. And how did he happen to keep the key? He said he should, in case he ever wanted to stop over. Did he give you the key? Well... Did he? I took it. Without asking? I'm sure it was all right with Dad. When was this you took it? Tonight, after supper. I took it off his dresser. Oh, if your father-in-law had some things here, why didn't you suggest that he come over here himself and get them instead of causing all this trouble? I asked. Him. I asked him a thousand times, but he's afraid of her. He's afraid to death of her. He was living in a chamber of terror here. You can believe me about that. How old is your father-in-law, Mrs. Eggerty? Oh, about 70, 71, I think. And, uh, and when did he move over to your house? Well, we finally got him to come three weeks ago. He'd been wanting to come for years, but finally he decided definitely that he wanted to spend more time with his grandchildren. I've got two. Uh, Joe Jr. is four, and Jamie's almost two. But there wasn't anything for him to do here except sit around and read the newspaper. You you couldn't get a word of decent conversation out of her. Nobody can. Well, where is your father-in-law now? Home, at my house, with the children. Of course, they're asleep, but he just loves to sit with them. Does he work? Yes, no. He retired years ago. He started the business Joe and Eddie run. Uh, they have contracts to deliver newspapers to dealers in the suburbs. Yes, we heard about them. It's a nice little business, and they both work very hard, I'll say that. And her husband, Eddie, is a very nice and easy to get along with. Nothing like her. I understand your father-in-law has a little money. Well, he worked hard all his life, and he's comfortable. And that's just the trouble. She's trying to get her big fat hands on it, and I'm not going to be the one to let her. Yeah, you see, didn't I tell you? You were listening. listening. My house is If you can call her out. Right, you're a steamy, conniving little... Okay, no. Don't now. you call me, Mame. Don't you I'll dare call, call me. Ladies, that's, call that's you. about anything enough, huh? I want, now, I cut it out. You. Wait. Well, this is some treatment I'm getting after all the trouble I've been through. There are people with bigger troubles, Mrs. Eckerty. I'd sure like to know who. Well, I would imagine, for instance, your respective husbands. Although the circumstances seem to indicate little more than a family argument, Mrs. Catherine Eckerty insisted on making a complaint. And to get the matter straightened out, both women were taken to the station house in the custody of David Meister, the first officer on the scene. If an arrest developed, it would be his case. At 9.20, I returned to the station house and walked into the muster room where Lieutenant Gorman was desk officer and Sergeant Lyons now had telephone switchboard duty. I walked around the desk to sign the block. All right, stop by there before the end of the tour. Captain? No, Sergeant? Yeah, I want you to check it again. Lieutenant? Captain? What's doing, Red? Oh, the teletype order, Captain. A conference of all precinct commanders in the lineup room, 240 Center Street at 1 p.m. Thursday. I'll put a copy on your desk. Okay, good. Thank uh, you, Miss. This is this where I go. Step right up to the desk, sailor. Oh, uh, yes, sir. What's the trouble? Listen, I think uh, somebody stole my wallet. What do you mean, you think? They, uh, uh, sailor, didn't I give you directions how to get to the Lexington Avenue subway a little while ago? You, you wanted to go to the Brooklyn Navy, huh? Well, y yes, sir. What happened? Well, I was on my way, all right. I was walking to the subway, and I passed this bar, and uh, I decided to stop in and get a beer. Uh, I was thirsty. Is that where you lost your wallet? I think so, yes, sir. Well, you said somebody stole it. Well, uh, I got to talking to a couple of people in there, a man and a girl. They were an interesting couple. You think they stole it? I don't know. See, I, I was talking to them, and, and, and she was... Uh, Leaning on my shoulder, and he told a joke, and we all died laughing, and that's all. All I know, it was gone. I got to the subway, and I wanted to get some tokens, and I had about 40 bucks in there. Over 40 bucks. 
Where is this from? Well, that's just the trouble. I don't remember exactly. I, I tried to think which way I came. I, I walked back and I tried to find it. See, I, I don't know New York very good. I couldn't locate it. You spoke to me on the corner of 87th Street and 2nd Avenue. Did you follow my directions when you walked to the subway? Well, I was... Sergeant, uh, who's catching upstairs? Dan Goldman, Lieutenant. All right. I'll tell you what to do, sailor. You see that door over there? Yes, sir. You go through that door and upstairs to the detectives. Ask for Detective Goldman. Yes, sir. He'll take care of you. Will he try to find my wallet? If you can find the bar you were in. Through that door. That's right, and upstairs. Yeah, thanks a lot, sir. What's your boy? Red, ring up to Goldman. Tell him I gave the boy directions to walk across 87th Street, down Lexington, one block to the subway station. From 87th and 2nd? Yeah, that's right. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Sergeant, will you ring the detective? Okay, yeah. Yes, Captain. Uh, patrolman Fowles worked in the first platoon. When he comes into the house, tell him I want to see him. Yes, sir. Oh, and check the surgeon's chart. If it's Dr. Rollman on reserve tonight, get him on the phone for me. Yes, sir. Let's stop over at the switchboard a minute, huh? Yes, if you want. Hello, the telly. Sergeant. Hello, Captain. Hey. Where, where are they, anyway? Upstairs, Mr. Reggedy. Oh. Would you ring upstairs for Lieutenant King, Sergeant? Yeah, sure. Are those his two daughters-in-law, Stansby? Yes, sir. I'm Captain Cronin, Mr. Reggedy. Oh, how are you, I don't know. I can't understand what goes on between those two. Why can't they get it straightened out? That's what we brought you in here for, to help get it straightened out. You want to take it on the extensions back here, Beach? Yeah, okay. Excuse me a minute, Mr. Agatha. Yeah, sure. Uh, take it behind there, will you? Listen, okay. Captain, what am I going to do about Hello, these two? Yeah, I've got a... I don't know, Mr. Regan. It's right been there. going on like this for years. Uh, well, I, I guess this will put an end to it one way or the other. No, I don't know. With police right and detectives, I don't know. Captain, Lieutenant King wants to know if he can talk to Mr. Eckerty in your office a minute. Yeah, sure. It's all right. He'll be right down. Oh, come on, Mr. Eckerty. You know, I, I try to be impartial. I try to like them both. Mm -hmm. well, Go right ahead, Mr. Eckerty. Thank you. Thanks. I don't know. All I ask is that I live out my last few years in peace. That's all I want. Uh, sit right down here. Sir. Half the time they don't speak. And when they do speak, they fight until they don't speak again. When this detective came to the house to get me, I knew what it was. As soon as he said he was a policeman, I knew the two of them were at it again. I had to get a neighbor woman to come in and sit with my grandchildren while I came over here. You know, a, a man is entitled to have two sons. And he's entitled to have two daughters-in-law. Now, why can't the atmosphere be peaceful? That's all I want. Live and let live. Oh, excuse me. Sure, sure. 21st Precinct, Captain Conan. Uh, Sergeant Lyons, OPS, Captain. It's not Dr. Holman who's on reserve tonight. Want me to try and get hold of the surgeon who is? No, no, that's all right. I want to talk to Dr. Holman personally, but no, nah, it'll keep. Yes, sir. Come in, Matt. Hello, Captain. Pete, hey, Lieutenant. Matt, this is Mr. John Eckerty, Lieutenant King. How do you do? How are you? Uh, sailor, come in here a minute. Yes, sir, Lieutenant. Vitaly, this is Seaman First Class Carl Donowitz. Yes, sir. Looks like somebody lifted his wallet in a bar somewhere between 87th and 2nd Avenue and the 86th Street Station of the Lexington Avenue line. He doesn't know exactly where the bar is. Yes, sir. Goldman took the squeal from him, but he's tied up right now. You go out and see if you can find the bar and find the wallet. Okay, Lieutenant. Come on, sailor. Yes, thanks, sir. Lieutenant. It's all right. How'd you get there? You, walk across, you seem to be very busy here tonight. It's always busy, Mr. Raggedy. Well, where are they? Uh, upstairs, uh, Katie and Marie? Oh, that's right. They're no. upstairs. Now, look, Mr. Eckerty, we've got all kinds of troubles around here. We've got car thieves, got narcotic addicts, got robbers, everything you can think of. You don't need family arguments. Yes, I know. Where are your two sons, their husbands? Couldn't they try to get here? Well, the detective said he tried to locate them, but they're out on the trucks, I'm sure. They're delivering the first editions. Well, uh, Mr. Raggedy, have they taken any action to stop what's going on between their wives? Oh, they've tried. They've tried for a long time, but they, they gave up. It just got too much for them. They're brothers, and they, they have the business. They don't want to get into the fight themselves, so they just ignore it. Well, it can't be handled by ignoring it. Well, I try to make peace, but what can I do? Mr. Eckerty, your daughter-in-law, Catherine, accuses Marie of breaking into her house and attempting to take some war bonds and some jewelry. Oh, that, that stuff yours? Yes, sure. The bonds are mine, and the jewelry was my wife. Did you intend for Marie to go over and get them? Did you tell her you wanted her to do that? Well, I don't know. 
they were safe in one place, the other. But did you ever indicate to Marie that you wanted her to go get them? We talked about it, the pro and con. Did you tell Catherine you wanted to leave the stuff there? Well, I didn't say anything definite. Mr. Eckerty, what do you think is the basis of the trouble between your daughters-in-law? Well, I suppose they don't just like each other. I mean, what do you think the real source of the trouble is? Well, I, I guess it's money. My money. You mean which one you're going to leave it to? Yes. Yeah. Now, isn't it a fact that you've first given one one reason to believe that you'll leave it to her side of the family, then you've turned around and said the same thing to the other? Not exactly, no. Well, you move from one family to the other every few years or so, don't you? Well, that's only because I, I, I want to share my time. That's and all. you have stated on occasion to either one or the other that they're going to be the principal legacy of your estate. <laughs> my estate doesn't amount to that much for them to fight about. I understand it's considerable. Isn't that true? Well, I'm no millionaire, if that's what you mean. I I have a little money, a few dollars. You've gone out of your way to encourage this conflict between them, haven't you? Hmm? Haven't you, Mr. Eckerty? I wouldn't say that. I no. would, Mr. Eckerty. Yes, well, I suppose you're right in a way. I haven't done anything to stop it, I'll say that much. Captain, I'm over 70. I'm all alone. and Fortunately, I, I do have a little money. I, I sat down, you know, one day, and I wondered what would happen to me if I didn't have any money. Instead of fighting about which one I'd live with, it'd be just the opposite. They'd fight about which one should take me. I'd rather have them fight than to want me. Don't you feel a little bit bad about the dissension you've caused in the family and the trouble you've caused your sons? Yes, I've felt bad about that for a long time, but I don't know how to stop it. Well, here's your opportunity, Mr. Lee. Yeah. I suppose it is. Uh, we'd better go up. But I hate to get in the middle. Of this. Mr. Raggedy, where do you think you are? Yes, uh, that's true. That's <clears throat> very true. Come on, Captain. Yeah, I'm coming, man. We're going to need lots of help. I'm going up to the detective, Sergeant. Yes, sir. That way, Mr. Raggedy. No, no. All I wanted was peace and quiet. A little peace and quiet. That's all. And a little home life. Now, you can't blame me for that. Up the stairs. I suppose I was wrong, but it seems so natural to have them want me. I guess I should have made them want me for myself. Not for my money, huh? Don't you think? That would have been a lot better, Mr. Eckerty. Yeah, I know. Just a second here. Mr. Eckerty, I've got Catherine sitting in the squad room. Yeah. And Marie is in my office. I want you to talk to Catherine first. All right. There shouldn't be any arrest in this case. Let's get it straightened out. All right, I'll do what I can. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Well, Dad, this is where she finally wound up in the police station. Katie, uh, You know what she did, don't you, yeah, Dad? Yeah. She broke into my apartment. She broke into my car, a red handed uh, I Katie, I want her. to talk to you. But, I told you what she was like. I yeah. saw it coming. I saw it plain as day. She's a thief, a plain thief. All right, thief. all right, all you right. You can't go on yeah. staying All there, right, Dad. Katie, now, where's but, Marie? I, I want to talk to her. You tell her, Dad. You give her a piece of your mind. In my office, Miss Eckerty. A plain thief, just a plain thief. Go ahead, Miss Eckerty. Marie, now... Dad, why did they have to bring you in this? Oh, who's with the children? When the detective came, I got Mrs. Quinter to sit. Oh. You know Captain Cronin. Yes, we met earlier. Hello. Now, now Marie, what is this all about? You said you wanted your bonds in the jewelry bag, didn't Marie, you? Well, Marie. as long as you didn't do anything, I just went over there to get them for you. Well, that, that wasn't very well. Well, I Marie. did it, and she had me Marie. arrested. Now, you're not going to stand by and let her have the mother of your only grandchildren arrested, are you? Are, are you going to stand for look, that? Look, Marie. Your only grandchildren, Dad. Supposing I have to go to jail, yeah. and those poor little things wouldn't have any mother, and it'd all be her fault. Now, wait all a minute. her fault. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> All right, Dad. All right. Look, is it all right if Katie comes in here? Why? I think it's time we get this thing straightened out. Sure. Well, I'm glad. I'm very glad you're going to straighten her out. Miss Rackerty, would you come in here a minute? Now, you said it was all my fault, Captain. Isn't that what you said? That's Downstairs? what I said. No, it's yes. not your fault, Dad. It's hers. What do you mean, uh, mine? Just what I said. Now, now he lived with me for five years, and he wants to come back. Oh, does he? You ask him. There's no need to ask you, you anything. Ask him. All right, all right. Now. You have no right to speak that way. Oh, oh don't I? Shut up. Now, both of you, shut up. Dad. 
Now, I'll admit that I was partly to blame for what happened. But from now on, I'm not going to be made a, a bean bag to be tossed between the two of you. I'm through with it. The war bonds and the jewelry and, and my money and my stocks and everything else. You'll both get your share in time. So don't worry about it. Now, good night. And thank you, gentlemen. Dad, Dad, wait. For what? Where are you going? I'm going to YMCA to live in peace and quiet. Dad, Marie, we better stop Now, him. wait a minute. You've got some unfinished business here. But he's going to the Y. You want to forget about this whole thing? Well, I don't you know. You don't hurry. You'll be checked in at the Y. Come on, Marie. I'm coming. I'm coming, Dad. You think the situation is cured, Captain? Well, at least a step has been made toward recovery. Excuse me. Sure. 21st Squad, Lieutenant King. Uh, hello, Lieutenant. This is Carl Donowitz. You know the sailor? Oh, yeah. Well, the detective, my colleague, told me to call him. Caught the man and lady that took my wallet. They took it out of my pocket in the bar, all right. The man still had it on him. Uh, the detective, my colleague, asked me to ask you to send the car to bring him in. Well, where are you? It's 194 East 87th Street, in the bar. All right. Tell him we'll be there right away. Yes. Okay. What is it, man? What do you got? A crime, Captain. A real, honest-to-goodness crime. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Lyons. What do you mean, missing? Lost? Well, how old is the little girl? Four and a half, huh? Well, who's she with? With her mother? Yeah. Well, where is this? And so it goes, around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh-and-blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring, or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct Transcribed, a factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city, is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the police department, City of New York. James Gregory in the role of Captain Cronin, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Featured in tonight's cast were Abby Lewis, Elaine Ross, Bill Quinn, Nathan Adams, Bill Smith, Santos Ortega, and Wendell Holmes. 21st Precinct is written and produced by Stanley Niff. Art Hannah speaking.